good evening guys this is dr paul once again thank you for tuning to our channel this evening and listening to this video today i want to talk a few minutes about primary dysmenorrhea or simply painful menstruation as always i request you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net please browse, browse through our videos and uh, hundreds of videos have been posted already and go through them and these are about the most important topics you will come across in your usmle examination so tonight i want to talk a few minutes about primary dysmenorrhea to simply put it, it is painful menstruation. We all know somebody in our families or among our friends who has been suffering from this problem. And this problem has social consequences. So we all get impacted by these uh, consequences and I don't want to go more in that direction. But limit today's discussion just to the treatment of primary dysmenorrhea. For the sake of uh, introduction, primary dysmenorrhea is one among the three types of dysmenorrhea. We have primary dysmenorrhea, secondary dysmenorrhea, and membranous dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea is the painful menstruation where no cause has been established. In secondary dysmenorrhea, there is a pathological cause like endometriosis, fibroids, cervical stenosis, or pelvic inflammatory disease. Those kinds of pathological causes, when they are present, it is secondary dysmenorrhea. And the third one, membranous dysmenorrhea, is when a membrane of endometrial cavity is cast off and causes the pain. But today I want to talk just about primary dysmenorrhea. As I said, primary dysmenorrhea is something in which you have not identified a cause. Pathogenesis, the most common pathogenesis is increased production of prostaglandins. As you know, prostaglandins, they, they are some kind of uh, vasoactive and they cause that vasoconstriction and cause this pain. And women with the dysmenorrhea, they have higher levels of prostaglandins compared to women who do not have this problem. The other thing is psychological factors. Sometimes we see this problem more in women whose mothers have the same kind of problem before. So there is a psychological compound present in this problem. That's why it's very important to educate the patients who are reaching the age of their menarche in order to prepare them for dysmenorrhea. And now the clinical findings, as, a, uh, as I said, this is a basically painful menstruation. And this menstruation, in, in fact, most of the women will have some kind of discomfort on the first day of their menstrual period. But when their physical activities are interrupted, when they have to use an over-the-counter or a prescription medication, that's a clearly a dysmenorrhea. And it impacts their daily lifestyle, it impacts uh, their relationships, and it impacts the, their performance in so many activities. So primary dysmenorrhea, it comes with the pain and it is always associated with ovulatory cycles and uh, it usually does not occur at the menarche because you see in the beginning stages, in the early, in the initial phases of menarche, the ovulatory cycles are not regular. But as the ovulatory cycles become more and more regular as the age advances, the dysmenorrhea becomes more and more pronounced because dysmenorrhea is ultimately associated with increased production of prostaglandins in ovulatory cycles. Now a few words about the differential diagnosis. The most common misdiagnosis in primary dysmenorrhea is the secondary dysmenorrhea due to endometriosis. That's the most common misdiagnosis. You see, the difference between the two is in primary dysmenorrhea, the dysmenorrhea occurs on the first or second or third days of menstrual period. 
but in endometriosis in secondary dysmenorrhea due to endometriosis the pain starts one to two weeks before the menstrual period and the pain it picks up just one or two days before the menstrual period and on the first day when the flow occurs the pain disappears that's the basic difference between primary dysmenorrhea and secondary dysmenorrhea due to endometriosis in primary dysmenorrhea the pain occurs with the menstruation whereas in secondary dysmenorrhea with endometriosis the pain starts like one to two weeks before the menstrual period and gets relieved with the menstrual flow. So that's basically about uh, di a differential diagnosis you need to remember. Now the treatment, number one, the gold standard is NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That is the main therapy for primary dysmenorrhea. You need to remember this very, very well. This is very, very important. You see, NSAIDs, they inhibit the concentration of prostaglandins in the body. That's why they became such a top priority and also they are cost effective. And COX-2 inhibitors like Valdicoxib can also be used, but they are a little bit uh, costly compared to the common uh, answers that are available. And antiprostaglandins, you see, antiprostaglandins, they work effectively because the pathogenesis of primary dysmenorrhea is increased prostaglandin synthesis. Then oral contraceptives. You can use oral contraceptives because the primary dysmenorrhea is associated with ovulatory cycles. When the patient is on oral contraceptives, their ovulatory cycles are decreased and uh, that, that, that relieves pain. And also the endometrial cavity its, it's lining also decreases and as a result prostaglandin synthesis decreases and that is a, a relieving factor in these patients. So NSAIDs, oral contraceptives and uh, surgical treatment. You need to uh, think of two things, uterosacral ligament division and presacral neurectomy. These are the two surgical procedures we use and also the psychological treatment and also dietary therapy which are also uh, which are not which are proven to be effective but the exact mechanism is not known so that's basically about um, uh, this this problem primary dysmenorrhea as always you can go to our website at www.usmlevideos.net this month i am uh, promoting a new book this is uh, usmle smasher this usmle smasher is the best book in my opinion for preparation for usmle clinical skills you see clinical skills is a costly examination thousands of dollars in preparation and uh, the examination fee itself is like fourteen hundred dollars and uh, many of you go for expensive courses and uh, i think that's not needed this book has excellent interviews and uh, um, clinical encounters and uh, this is the book I studied and if you are wondering which book you should study for USMLE that is USMLE Smasher and I recommend this book just $19 and it saves you thousands of dollars of money that you are going to spend on expensive courses that's about it and uh, please feel free to put your comments and uh, you can also add uh, more information on this topic in uh, in our comment section on our website uh, so that other students who explore this topic can learn something and prepare well. That's about it. As always, this is usmlevideos.net. Dr. K.G. Paul, thank you very much. Bye-bye.